I grew up hiking and camping and fishing and snowboarding and skiing. And in doing that, I grew a passion for science. I was part of an undergraduate research program where I actually got to go into the lab and learn, I mean, pretty basic techniques, learn PCR, learn cell culture. And that's kind of where my passion for science grew even more. I took a little stint doing a lab tech at the University of Utah, and I was working in the Department of Neurology, and we started doing a bunch of RNA sequencing. So when I heard biomedical informatics, I saw it was this nice intersectionality of computer science and biology, and that's where I wanted to be. University of Utah is the oldest biomedical informatic program, and I think it's hands down one of the best programs. We have learning healthcare seminar talks, where we pull in leaders from the field, I was a student representative, so one of my jobs was actually to interact with these leaders and to actually be able to see like where the field has been and where the visionaries think it's going. That was an amazing opportunity and one of my favorite things. You might need to come in with some very basic skills, some you know coding skills, biology skills, whatever. But when you get into the program and it's so broad, you're not gonna have training for all of that. You can pick that up as you go along. And I think the University of Utah did a great job with me. I was able to work in cancer. I was able to work in neurology. There is no right background. People come from all over the place. One of my favorite people to work with was a psychologist who came into informatics. And that's not a pairing that I think a lot of people would make, but she was doing so much user interface work that was really amazing and really helpful. You can come from anywhere and be successful in informatics. I uh, finished my PhD and I still wanted to learn more. There were new techniques and new opportunities and I wanted to stick in academia until I felt like I had a good foothold in the projects, in the field, and I also kind of wanted to do something bigger and more challenging and that's why I went to City of Hope. Basically, I'm working on the evolution of subclonal phenotypes in breast and ovarian cancer. The reason I chose that is because it's a challenging problem, but even more than that, it's an incredibly translational problem. The work that I do, the computational work, you can be put into a clinical trial within a couple years. It's pretty amazing, and we're trying to do great things for patients. I think one of the things I found is kind of my scientific voice. It was, uh, I, I met so many people that I realized I had to have an opinion and bring an opinion and experience to the table that people were gonna start relying on me. And that's one of the things that I learned from my program is that my voice mattered.